Hey guys and welcome to your weekly news update for Battlefield 2042. Today we have a lot to talk about, season 7 has just started, we got new weekly missions and store items, there is a free weekend coming up and Marcus Leto has nothing positive to say about EA. So let's get right in. Season 7 has finally started today after a very, very long Season 6 and adds a new map, two new weapons, a new gadget and a new battle pass to the game. Alongside of this, we also got update 7.0 today that is around 6GB on all platforms and comes with a lot of changes to weapons and vehicles. If you haven't watched my patch notes video yet, here is a short rundown of the update's key points. The headshot multiplier of assault rifles and LMGs was lowered to 1.9, while the one for SMGs was increased to 1.55 to bring more balance to these weapon categories. We got a new visual recall system that makes weapons feel heavier and more impactful. Casper's recon drone doesn't have an EMP blast anymore and can only spot enemies now. The Assault and Recon class got their C5 reduced to 2 instead of 3 and only the Engineers are still able to have 3 C5. The Wildcat's turret was made a little sturdier and we got improvements to the deploy screen. But that's really only the key points of this update. Again, for a full overview and more details on everything that has changed, be sure to check out the video in the info box. There were also reports about players being unable to progress in the battle pass or to spawn into the game with one of the new weapons and there seemed to be crashes mid-game when playing on Xbox Series X. But I hope that this will be solved by the time this video goes live, if not then DICE is still trying to find a solution for it and will hopefully fix it soon. If you want to stay updated on this kind of info, be sure to follow Battlefield Comms over on X. Back to the game, for the new map Haven you can now find two dedicated playlists. One is for Conquest and the other one is for Breakthrough. So you don't need to wait for the one you prefer, instead you can hop into the mode you like right away and check out the new map. We also got two new portal modes, as usual. These are Conquest of Ages and 2042 Tank Superiority this time. Conquest of Ages is a 64 player mode that runs across different maps from 1942, Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3 and Tank Superiority is completely focused on ground vehicles vehicles that fight for dominance over a single objective. On Friday we can also expect to see a new Friday Night Battlefield experience that will be available for 24 hours. We also got two new weapons with the start of Season 7, the AK-5C Assault Rifle and the SCZ-3 SMG and both are taken or inspired by Battlefield 4 and can be unlocked through the battle pass as usual. The SMG is at tier 7 already, so pretty early this time, and the Assault Rifle at tier 19. The battle pass itself is available in four different versions. A free pass that is accessible to everyone but only lets you unlock 30 tiers of the battle pass. A premium pass that costs 1000 battlefield coins and lets you unlock all 100 tiers. Plus it gives you an additional tier 0 pack with more cosmetics, a 20% permanent XP boost and the option for persistent portal servers. Then there's the fast track pack for 2200 battlefield coins that includes all the advantages of the premium pass but comes with 20 additional tier skips. And we also have the ultimate pack again that cannot be purchased with battlefield coins but only with real money and costs $20. It has all the benefits of the premium pass plus 20 tier skips and also comes with an additional cosmetic bundle that is exclusive for this pack. Because of the 20 tier skips, the ultimate pack as well as the fast track pack give you instant access to the season's new weapons, but if that's worth the additional money, you have to decide for yourself. However, if you should go for the ultimate pack or if you have to buy coins to get the normal premium pass and you play the game on PC with the EA app, be sure to use your favorite creator's promotion code at the checkout to support them. Simply click at apply promo code and the creator receives a 5% share from EA. If you want to use mine, it's simply Catwoman, but I know that other creators got these codes as well, so go for the one you prefer. Unfortunately, it's only available for the EA app at the moment and also only for Battlefield 2042 content, but maybe they add it to other platforms or even the in-game store in the future. Talking about the in-game store, we also got a new bundle over there, or actually an old bundle that makes a return, plus a huge bundle of a lot of different cosmetics. 
The returning one is the Year of the Dragon bundle that was part of the event a few weeks ago and includes a specialist set for Dozer, weapon skins for the PBX and Super 500, a weapon charm and a player card tag. If you've already unlocked two of the cosmetics as rewards back then, the bundle should be cheaper than normal. And the other one is called Red Envelope, costs 5000 Battlefield coins and includes 53 different items across all styles and themes. Not sure if this bundle is usually even more expensive, cause I already own a few of the items, so the price might be reduced for me. No idea who the target audience for this is, but <laughs> it is in the store now. Not sure if these are really the bundles for this week though, since it seems odd to start the season with them, but that's what's shown for me as I'm doing this video. Maybe they will change later today. There's also a small discount on the Caretaker bundle that includes the Mirage Medic skin for Falk and this legendary V skin for Brawler alongside some other cosmetics. In addition, all members of Prime Gaming can now claim their monthly subscriber rewards for 2042. This time it's a weapon skin for the AM40 and a 1 hour XP boost, which is probably perfect for the start of the new season. The offer ends on April 9, so be sure to head over to the Prime Gaming website to claim it. Link is in the description below. If you want to check out Battlefield 2042 for free, because you haven't bought it yet or you have friends that are skeptical about the game and would like to try it before buying it, we also have a free-to-play weekend coming up for all platforms. On PC it starts on Thursday, March 21st and runs until Sunday, March 24th. And on consoles you can already start playing on Wednesday, March 20th and one day longer until Monday, March 25th. If you like what you play during these days and you want to buy the game, it's now also on a massive discount alongside other titles of the series. 2042 is only around $10 on all platforms and the older titles are even cheaper. So if you are still missing some of them, be sure to fill up your libraries. And of course, we also got a set of new weekly missions with the start of the season and as usual I will go through them and give you some tips if necessary. In general, the missions are similar to the ones we had in former seasons, only that the points we get for each tier differ again and are not the same across all tiers like it was in season 6. Anyways, in the first section of this week you need to capture or neutralize three objectives, do five kills and revives and disrupt three enemies with EMP or concussion grenades. Once the second section is unlocked you have to do 15 kills and assists while playing as Assault, so get in as either Sundance, Dozer, McKay or Zane. Then you need to revive 15 teammates and earn 6 combat and objective ribbons. Combat ribbons are earned by doing kills or destroying vehicles and objective ribbons by capturing, neutralizing and defending objectives. The third section then wants you to do 20 melee kills or kills with throwing knives, but when you do takedowns it doubles the mission progression and you only need to do 10 of them. However, I would still recommend to do this with Dozer and his shield, cause it always seems to be the easiest way. Then you need to do 20 kills with grenades, but when doing the kills with Sundance's scatter grenades it also doubles the mission progression, so we will probably see a lot of Sundance's and Dozer's this week. The last mission of the section requires you to inflict 10,000 damage and I think this should be pretty much self-explanatory. For the bonus mission you simply need to do 10 kills and assists with either Sundance, Crawford, Angel or Blasco and the week is already done. As usual you can do all missions in portal modes against AI if you want to or if you are struggling with any of them. Just use one of my codes in the portal experience tab and don't forget to add a password if you don't want any other players to join. Besides this I also have some more news for you that came up in the last few days and that I want to go through as well. So first of all we got a new episode of the Inside Battlefield podcast and this time it's all about season 7 and its content. And while most of it is already known from the blog posts and preview events, there were some more details mentioned to the new stadium map that is coming to the game later during the season and also to the new vehicle the XFAT4 Draugr. So the stadium will be an infantry only standalone map, but that's what we already knew. It will have three floors that feature a lot more cover than before and new paths that have been opened up. The lighting on the map has been completely redone and there will also be some crazy portal experiences for it available like a vehicle mayhem mode. 
In addition, we got some more info to the Draugr, the new bomber that is also being added later in the season. So the bomber is coming to the chat category. It will have EMP and incendiary bombs, but it won't have radar missiles as I had previously stated, because that was a wrong info from the fact sheet we had received. And it will also not have air-to-air -air missiles. It will be mainly infantry focused and especially support strikes, but its defensive capabilities are lower compared to other vehicles, which makes it easier to take down. It also has an active camouflage system that we've seen in the trailer and that prevents lock-ons for a short amount of time, but this camo will only be partially and you will still be able to see a shimmer. It will also not have traditional flares available and it will be very vulnerable in dogfights. So that's everything we know so far, but I'm sure we will learn more about the vehicle closer to its release. And then we also got an interesting post from Marcos Leto, the former head of Ridgeline Games, who was responsible for the single player campaign of the next Battlefield, but suddenly left the studio about two weeks ago. After a long radio silence, Leto wrote on X, Not been saying much here since I don't have anything positive to say about EA, my recent departure and how so many, including my team, are suffering due to the industry sweeping layoffs. And this seems to confirm the suspicion that Leto has not left EA and Battlefield on good terms. He's of course also not happy with how the situation was handled from EA's side and that they did lay off the whole studio. We will probably never know what really happened there, but I can imagine that Leto wanted the narrative and the campaign of the next game to go into a different direction than EA had imagined, or what he wanted to build was too expansive and too expensive for EA and Leto didn't feel like he had the creative freedom he needed. But that's just my guess, because I'm sure he is a very creative person who does doesn't want to have the vision for his creation cut by a budget. But whatever happened, I hope Leto will find his way back into the gaming industry and will be able to create whatever he likes to in a different environment, maybe even with an own studio. And I wish him all the best for his future projects. And at the end, a quick word to the current issues that occurred in Apex Legends, where streamers were being hacked during an esports event. At the moment, there is a speculation that this might be a safety problem with Easy Anti Cheat or with Apex itself, and that it may also affect many more players. So, if you play on PC and you play Apex, you might want to check your system for viruses and not log into the game for now. However, I also read a lot of news outlets that recommend not playing any EA games at all for now, including Battlefield 2042, as they all run on easy anti-cheat, but that's not true and I'm always wondering how these professionals are so bad in doing their research. Because Battlefield 2042 is not running on easy anti-cheat anymore, it is using EA anti-cheat that was already rolled out about six months ago. I'm actually wondering why they didn't move Apex over to the new anti-cheat as well, but anyways, I'm not saying EA anti-cheat is 100% safe, it sure is not, but I wanted to correct this wrong information since some players might be concerned about this development in Apex and are wondering if Battlefield could be affected as well. But that was it for today, your usual overview of what's going on in and around Battlefield 2042 at the moment. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like or a comment below and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching and thanks to my members for the additional support. I'm Catwoman and you are awesome.